how old is the Earth? Is it really 4.5 billion years old? Or is it even conceivable it's as young as 6,000 years old? Now, the only way to arrive at an age of 4.5 billion years is by the radioisotope dating of rocks. So let's take a look at radioisotope dating. If you pick up the right kind of rock, let's say it's an igneous rock containing potassium. Potassium, we know, is an unstable element, decays to argon. Turns out it decays at a very slow rate. If you pick up the rock, measure the potassium, measure the argon, you know the rate at which one decays to the other, hallelujah, you can date the rock. It's pretty simple to understand. However, you have to assume some things. Number one, how do you know the rate of decay has always been constant? You don't know that, you have to assume it. How do you know there was zero argon at the beginning of this decay process when the rock first solidified? You don't know that, you have to assume it. Number three, how do you know that no argon or potassium is leached in or out of the system? These are all mobile species. How do you know none of that's happened? You don't know that, you have to assume, 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 and the numbers that you get are only as good as those assumptions are true. Let's look at three examples of how this works out in practice. At Mount St. Helens in 1980, there was a lava flow that was dated 10 years later for potassium argon dating. It yielded ages ranging from 350,000 to two and a half million years. For a rock that's true age is only 10 years. Obviously something is wrong with the method in this case. Well, the standard answer from the scientific community was obviously this eruption had excess argon associated with it, but that just raises the bigger question. How do you know all of your ancient unknown rock samples? Rocks that you don't know the age for, how do you know they also didn't have excess argon associated with them? You see, there's no way to test these assumptions. You just take it on faith. Now what happens when you apply multiple age dating techniques, isotope dating techniques, to the same rock? In this case, an ideal rock body in the bottom of Grand Canyon was dated using four independent methods, and the ages range from 845 million all the way up to 1.37 billion years. Which one is the true age? Do we have a basis for accepting one as the truth and rejecting the other three? No, because the data look good on all four of them. You have to be arbitrary in selecting one over another. Now in this third example, let's apply the same dating technique to two completely different rock bodies. One at the bottom of Grand Canyon called the Cardenas Basalt. Rubidium strontium isochron date 1.07 billion years old. There's another rock body way up on the top of Grand Canyon dated 1.34 billion. Obviously, the one on the top can't be older than the one on the bottom. Any geologist can see these numbers are nonsense. What is wrong with these methods? Something is desperately wrong here. So we've seen now, in principle, there's a lot of untested assumptions that go into these methods. In practice, contradictory numbers pop up a lot more frequently than most people realize. So how old do I think the Earth is? Given that all these radioisotope dating techniques require untestable assumptions, and given the fact that they yield numbers that are frequently contradictory, I fall back on a reliable historical account. And when I read in the pages of scripture of a six-day creation, credible list of genealogies, a global flood, I don't see anything about radioisotope dating that tells me this account is nonsense. So as a geologist, I find it very easy to believe in an Earth as young as 6,000 years.